Our reading today is from John's Gospel, chapter 12, starting at verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Now, the dominant world power at the time of Jesus was the Roman Empire, and they were famed for their military victories, often followed by a triumphal entry of the commanding general or even the emperor, leading captives and spoils of war in their wake. And the first century Jews in Jerusalem were clearly hoping for this sort of military victory. They're shouting, Hosanna, save, proclaiming Jesus as the hoped for Messiah, the one who would overthrow their enemies their political oppressors and eventually return glory to Israel. They're harking back to the good old days of King David when Israel had a king who won spectacular military battles and when being a Jew meant you could hold your head up high. But that's not how Jesus is going to win a great victory and charging in on a white stallion to defeat the Romans clearly isn't what Jesus has planned. Interestingly, the Gospel writer John must have had this event in mind when he wrote down his vision in Revelation 19 of Jesus called the Word of God, atop a white horse leading his armies to a final conclusive victory charge that results in him establishing his rule on earth. But in our Gospel reading, we see the method that Jesus will use to win his victory, not as a conquering emperor, but as a bringer of peace humbling himself and riding on an ordinary plain donkey. At his great victory, he dies on a cross as a criminal, creating a new covenant with his blood. In the words of Zechariah, that will set the captives free. And in his resurrection, he declares that not even death can stop him. So what are we to do in light of this upside down triumphal entry? Well, friends, I think we can be greatly encouraged. I love the multi-layered prophetic nature of this event that Jesus participates in. Not only is he fulfilling a prophecy from Zechariah, it's also a foretelling, showing what is going to happen. The passage in Revelation is a promise to stir up hope. Jesus will return to rule with peace and justice as king on this earth. John's Gospel is also a fourth telling. It's revealing something that's universally true. Jesus is king, even as he rides on the donkey into Jerusalem. And in just a few days from this triumphal entry, he will prove it by dying on a cross and coming back to life three days later. So we can be especially confident and encouraged in the face of fear, uncertainty and a global pandemic. Jesus is King. And as we find encouragement in that, I just encourage us to be bold to pray. I love that final part, I don't know whether you caught it, of John 12 in verse 19. It says, The Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. And I encourage us today. Uh, to turn this verse into a prayer that the whole world would go after Jesus.